Hello and welcome to this week's AB Tutor Tip. We understand that most places with an interest in blocking websites will have a site-wide filter set up on their firewall. However, using AB Tutor in addition to these blocks allows for extra blocks to be added temporarily without needing to go through the IT department. AB Tutor allows these additional blocks to be applied either through whitelisting or blacklisting so you can specify a list of sites to allow or a list of sites to block. To do this, you will need to start by creating a policy. More information on policies can be found in the videos on scheduling policies, applying policies and disabling policies. Make sure you select the block websites policy effect. This will add a new tab to the policy builder window, allowing you to configure which sites get blocked. On the block websites tab, you can select whether you want to generally allow sites with a list of exceptions or block all sites with a list of exceptions, that is whether you blacklist or whitelist specific sites. Click the add button to add a new entry to the exceptions list. We recommend that you make the exception relatively general and use wildcards around it to ensure it matches. For example, to block Facebook, which appears as https colon slash slash www.facebook.com, you can block star.facebook.star or even just star Facebook star. The client will then match on anything that has the specified string in the URL and either block or allow that website as applicable. Note that as website addresses contain more than just the domain name, it's very important to put the stars in. For secure HTTPS sites, which these days is practically all websites, the client only has access to the domain name that the browser is connecting to, so blocking or allowing is done on a per domain basis. More specific blocks can be done using the application block, as web browsers will put the page title in their title bar, allowing the application block to kill any web browser which goes to an unwanted site. Please be aware that closing the web browser like this is a more drastic step than just blocking the site and could lead to a loss of work if that's in a different tab in that browser. We also have a bulk add option which opens a text entry box allowing a list of sites to block or allow to be pasted in in one go. Please put one entry per line. If you want to remove entries from the list, select them by clicking on them or by clicking and dragging to select a range, then click the remove button. Finally, the import button allows entries to be imported from a CSV file. If you want to be notified when one of your client users tries to go to a site that's being blocked by ABTutor, you can turn on Report Events and then choose whether to email on every notification and whether to have a notification appear in the console. If you have blocked all sites except a few whitelisted ones, be aware that this will lead to a lot of notifications as Windows tries to connect to Microsoft servers very frequently, even if the computer isn't actually being used. When you first set up a website blocking policy using Block All Except, you will probably find that some of the sites you've whitelisted don't work properly. This is because many sites pull in resources from other domains and they require these to work. You can test the policy with logging turned on to see what other domains it is trying to access and then decide whether to allow those domains or not. Once configured, the policy can be finished and then applied to your client computers as normal. It will immediately take effect and start blocking sites as specified. If you have any questions about this policy or any other AB Tutor features, please let us know by emailing support at abtutor.com. Thanks for watching.